Level 3 Personal Training Anatomy and Physiology Energy Systems By the end of this session you will be able to identify the contribution of energy according to the duration of exercise, the type of exercise, the intensity of exercise. You will also be able to identify the byproducts of the three energy systems and their significance in muscle fatigue and describe the effect of endurance training and advanced training methods on the use of fuel for exercise. Adenosine triphosphate Contained within the fats, carbohydrates and protein present in the diet is a chemical compound called adenosine triphosphate, also known as ATP. It is this chemical compound which is used by the body to supply all of its energy requirements, also known as the universal energy currency. Although fats and carbohydrates are the preferred energy sources, when carbohydrate stores are depleted or food is scarce, protein too can be utilised. The structure of ATP. ATP is an energy rich compound comprising of one adenosine molecule bound with three phosphate molecules. Energy is stored in the bonds that link the phosphate groups to the larger adenosine molecule and are called high energy bonds. ATP releases or liberates its energy when one of its two high energy bonds is broken, resulting in adenosine diphosphate plus phosphate. Adenosine diphosphate is also known as ADP. The action of ATP during muscular contraction. When the ATP, which is stored on the myosin head, is broken down to ADP, it causes the myosin head to nod and the actin to slide over the myosin. The myosin head then binds with another ATP molecule, causing it to detach from the binding site. This enables it to attach to the next binding site and repeat the process. This will continue as long as ATP is available. Nervous stimulation is present and other fatiguing factors do not interfere. There is a very limited store of ATP within the muscles, so they must be continually replenished if exercise is to continue. There are three energy systems able to do this. The creatine phosphate energy system, the lactate energy system, and the aerobic system. The creatine phosphate energy system Creatine phosphate also has a high energy bond with phosphate. When this bond breaks, the released phosphate molecule is then free to attach itself to ADP, turning it back into ATP. This chemical reaction happens very quickly. However, like ATP, CP stores are very limited. The CP system is therefore used for activities of high intensity but low duration. The lactate energy system. Glucose is a carbohydrate found in either the blood, known as blood sugar, or in glycogen, which is a stored form of glucose. There are two ways by which glucose can supply energy. One is dependent upon the presence of oxygen, known as aerobic. The other 
without the presence of oxygen, known as anaerobic. The lactate system does not require oxygen and allows rapid ATP production to continue beyond the few seconds of the CP system. However, without oxygen, the glucose molecule cannot be broken down fully, which results in a waste product called lactic acid. The lactate system is therefore used for sports which require higher intensities between 20 seconds and 3 minutes in duration. The aerobic system. The aerobic energy system is dominant during lower intensity activities such as walking, jogging, swimming and cycling. This is when ATP demands are low and oxygen plentiful. The two macronutrients that supply the body with ATP are fat and carbohydrate. And in some extreme circumstances such as starvation Protein. The only byproducts produced by the aerobic system are carbon dioxide, water, and heat. Therefore, there are almost no limits to the amounts of ATP that can be produced using this energy system. Exercise and training leads to long-term training adaptations. The three energy systems all adapt in different ways. The aerobic system will undergo some pulmonary changes, for example, improvements in the efficiency of the respiratory muscles, and an increase in maximal breathing rate and tidal volume. There will also be some cardiovascular changes. The heart of a trained individual will show significant hypertrophy. There will be improvements in coronary blood flow, increased stroke volume and an increase in muscle capillaries. There will also be some muscular changes, particularly with regard to an increased size and number of mitochondria. Mitochondria are referred to as the powerhouses of cells responsible for respiration. With all these changes, the trained individual is therefore able to take in, transport and utilise more oxygen. The lactate system also experiences some training adaptations, although the training adaptations in the lactate system are primarily related to improvements in the cardiorespiratory system. Basically, muscles that receive and utilise more oxygen produce less lactic acid at a given exercise intensity. Although regular anaerobic training will also bring improvements to the ability to buffer the effects of lactic acid and improve our mental tolerance, so we can shut out the physical discomfort, with the resultant effect that the individual will be able to work harder for longer. The CP system also experiences some training adaptations. The principal adaptations associated with training the CP system include increased muscle size and improved activation of the muscle by the nervous system. However, the CP system itself can also adapt, enabling significant increases to muscular stores of ATP and creatine phosphate. Can you now identify the contribution of energy according to the duration of exercise, the type of exercise and the intensity of exercise? Can you also identify the byproducts of the three energy systems and their significance in muscle fatigue? Finally, can you describe the effect of endurance training and advanced training methods on the use of fuel for exercise? For more health and fitness education, visit www.stormfitnessacademy.com.
www.co.uk.